Guys, if you want to learn how to not goof up, then you better watch this one. Guys, welcome to the Mr. Bubbles channel where we dish out awesome pressure washing business advice to beginners. And I got a great episode for you guys today. But before we get into today's episode, I wanted to make a quick announcement. Now, I want to say we're about four or five episodes away from doing an episode that I've never done anything like it before. I'm going to do a screen tutorial episode where I'm going to show you guys on uh, canva.com how to uh the six by nine postcard that i mentioned to you guys so much i'm going to show you the the edible version how you take that and you put all your information on it that's going to be episode so you guys uh you know stay tuned for that it's going to be episode 128 however that's going to be a members only episode if if you are not yet a member of the mr bubbles channel don't worry to join, all you got to do is hit this button right here below the below the video, and then it's also link. There's a link to it. It's it's a membership through YouTube itself, and it's a, it's what we call our inner circle. You join that. It's a five dollar fee a month, which is nothing because you guys know this. I've mentioned this quite quite a few times that uh, guys, the Mr. Bubbles channel is um, it's a virtual tra trade school, right? Like we're we're. We're building a power washing academy for you guys. So anyway, so that screenshot tutorial is going to me it's going to show you exactly what to do. Of course, it's a company I mentioned before, canva.com. It's like a design software for dummies like you and me, right? So uh, you know, so anyway, the bottom line is make sure you stay tuned for that cuz that's going to be a great episode cuz I uh, man, a tremendous amount of you guys, like a lot of you guys ask me for that like to to you know uh to show you how to edit that and then the other thing i was going to say is this the very next episode after this one right here is also going to be a members only episode because so you guys remember in episode 120 when we went out and used that the the truck for the truck build and joe the owner of that truck could not be with us well guess what guys about uh three or four days ago he was actually here and then we went out and did a job together and you guys got get to see again us using that truck and we did like a little interview with joe so and, and man that was a pretty good job guys it took us an hour and a half we were there doing rust removal house wash uh actually it was one side wash not the whole house concrete cleaning uh, anyway, the bottom line is that's a great episode and it's right after this one again That's a members only episode because in that episode is really 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 the um, <clears throat> I guess you could say the wrap-up of the truck build series So I highly recommend uh, you guys watch that one. But anyway enough said guys. Let's jump into today's episode today's episode is titled uh, why 97% of the people in the pressure washing business fail and the reason why I decided to do this So I got an email I want to say a couple weeks ago from a person asking about this like hey I want to avoid all of the things all of the pitfalls, you know and ask me why why I think some people or most people fail in the pressure washing business and then it kind of got the kind of got the old old noggin, you know thinking right like i was thinking about yeah why is that why do so many people fail in the pressure washing business as a matter of fact guys and i'm going to mention this throughout this video you know in my personal circle i have in the last like six seven years me personally have known two people that try to get into pressure washing and they did not make it and we're going to talk about that so anyway there's three reasons that i that i found through experience right you guys got to remember i network with a tremendous amount of people in the industry i also have a bunch of coaching clients and then plus i just have a lot of experience uh, with it because i you know this is my 12th year but anyway so there, to me from what i've noticed and what i've gathered there's three main reasons why people fail and why is this important to know because if you guys can avoid these, that already puts you in a three percentile club of being able to, you know, have the have the, the ability to be able to make it in a business. So I'm going to mention all three here, guys, and then we're going to do a breakdown of each. So the number one thing is 
unreal expectation. Number two, we're going to be talking a little bit about mindset. And then finally, we're going to talk about why your why is not big enough. And I'm going to explain exactly what that means. So let's jump into the first one. Uh, and it is number one, guys, for a reason. Unreal expectations. From what I've noticed, a good 80 to 90 percent of the people that fail in this business, they fail because they come into this business with like just some ridiculously unreal expectations, guys. And that's just the bottom line. Like, you know, I, I talk to a lot of you guys and I've, I've heard I've heard things that I'm just like blown away. And, and here's the thing, guys, you know. I know, I know you guys watching this or listening to this in your trucks, you know, while you're driving and stuff, you know, the bottom line is, you know, you have a lot of content creators out there, right? I've mentioned a few that I like a lot, like Pink Flamingo down in Florida. Uh, I think he's got some great content. Uh, the Fresh Rinse, we mention him all the time in the channel. He's got some pretty good content. Joe Deary, that's another guy. Austin Davis. I love um, Soft Wash TV. Uh, that's a pretty Kyle. That's right. That's his name is Kyle. Anyway, I could I could sit here and name a bunch of guys, right? But here's the thing: when you guys see those videos or my videos, you're kind of seeing. How can I explain this? It's like let me put it this way. So when I started my business 12 years ago, I wasn't making videos. I just started making videos a year ago because my first 11 years in a business. I was learning, right? I spent my first seven, eight years really becoming a master. Like, um, there's a lot of things that happened to me along the way. So when, for example, you know, you see a video of me and then in a, in a four or five hour window, I make $3,000 because I go out there and I knock out four or five jobs. Or you see a video of another of your favorite content creators and they go out and they do a, a four or $500 wash in 35 minutes, 40 minutes. You're like, wow, man, that guy's making in one day what I made all of last month. But, but you, what you're not seeing is everything that it took for that guy to get to that point. You guys get what I'm saying here? Because again, you know, you're seeing me like when you guys watch one of my videos, you're really watching the polished version of me, the version of me that already has done 10,000 homes. So if I'm doing a house wash, you know, sometimes you, you've seen you guys, uh, you've, you have seen me do, for example, a house wash with a driveway wash and it's like $6.99 and I'm there for an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. And you say to yourself, wow, that's amazing. Wow, I'm gonna follow his blueprint and I'm gonna do exactly like him. But guys, like, I've done uh, thousands of jobs like that. And when I first started doing this business, it wasn't like this. And, and so let's talk about it, guys. Like, what are actual real expectations? I'm going to lay this, this, this down for you. So I've mentioned this before in, in a couple of my videos. My first year, I did not make any money. Okay, actually, my first two years, I did not make any money. Now, when I say I did not make any money, it, it doesn't mean I, you know, I was starving to death and I was living on the streets. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is I didn't turn a profit. I was just skating by. And let's say I was making, I don't know, 2000 2500 bucks a month. A month, okay? I was skating by. Because I've often have said this on the Mr. Bubbles channel, right? that your pay is nothing but a reflection of your skill. And at that time when I started, I just wasn't skilled enough. I didn't know enough. You know, experience, chemical knowledge, commercial grade equipment. I talk about this all the time. When I started, um, you know, uh, power washing, pressure washing as a side hustle or a part-time job back in those days, like I just didn't know what I was doing, guys. So it was taking me four or five hours to do even the smallest jobs you, you guys get get what i'm saying here like i, I want to make sure that you guys understand this concept because again you know if you see things on TikTok or or uh, maybe on on facebook or you know some other social media and it makes it look easy that's because to that person it is i'm going to give you guys a great example of something that happened to me personally about a month ago so a month ago, uh, this happened actually on a Sunday. I had like a, a, a clogged sink. Uh, it was actually a kitchen sink at my house. And so, you know, it was Sunday. It was a huge inconvenience. We couldn't shower. Like, I mean, it was causing a mess at my house. It was some kind of backflow issue, right? 
Now, I wasn't sure because it was Sunday, I was going to be able to get somebody out there. So I told my old lady, I said, hey, don't worry about it. I'm going to go to the shop. I'll get a bunch of tools. I'll come out here. I'll take apart some pipes, whatever, and I'll fix this. Vaptu vuptu. That's what that. That's what I told her. Vaptu vuptu. Like, like I was going to do it like quick style. So I came to the shop and uh, yeah, I got a bag full of tools. Guys, I'm not even kidding you. I spent three hours. I took a bunch of stuff apart. Spent three hours, three hours of my time on Sunday trying to fix this problem and I could not fix the problem. Then, the, then what we did is we called, we actually did this online, schedule a plumber to come out the next day at 10. Guys, the plumber got there at 10, he left at 1020. He fixed the problem like that, like it was nothing. What I couldn't do in three hours, the plumber did in 15 minutes. And that was like from the time he showed up to the time he left. I mean, I was like, wow. But when I was talking to him, the plumber's been doing it for 28 years. When a plumber has 28 years of experience and he comes to your house, guys, you're not paying the plumber for what he does. You're paying the plumber for what he knows. You guys get that? Like that cost me $289 in 15 minutes plus. I gave him a $50 tip because I'm, I'm paying for his knowledge and experience, okay? So when you see, for example, a Joe Deary or a Pink Flamingo or whomever, Mr. Bubbles, and, and we go out there and we're doing, you know, a, a three, four hundred dollar job in 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Be, what it is, is because we have years and years and years and years and years of experience. I've often said this, you become a master at a thousand houses. And then, guys, I have 10,000 plus houses that I personally have done out in the field. Imagine that. Imagine how many jobs that is, guys. You know, how many times I've been to, uh, you know, do a basement stairwell, a driveway, a, a, a roof, and the list goes on of all the things I've been out there doing over a 12-year career. So I want you guys to level, level a little bit your expectations because you're not going to be able to get out there right away and actually make what we make. So back to my previous point, what are real expectations? This is what I truly believe, guys. Like, I, ha I have a coaching client right now. His name is Alex. He's in his second year right now. Like, like 2024 is his second year. Last year was his last year. And for his first year, he made around 35000 I think that's pretty real. I think that's realistic. That's more or less right where I was as well. And again, guys, I want you to, I want to bring this point home. It's not about having or not having the right equipment yet. It's about not having the right skill set yet. Because as you grow your skill level, your bank account will grow. That's how that works. And the problem is right now, you guys just don't have all of the skills that you need. And guess what? It takes about anywhere between one to three years to really develop a high level of a skill. Right. So we've talked about this a lot on the channel. Marketing is a skill, branding, sales, customer service, administration, financial management, SOMA, right? SOMA, S-O-M-A, sales, operations, marketing, administration. You need to develop those things before you go out there and you start making a lot of money. So then, like, for example, going back to Alex. Our goal this year for Alex as a coaching client is for him to get up to that 75 to 85,000 range for second year and then by next year six figures. So that's realistic. I think that's very realistic. So you go 30 30 to 45,000 your first year, maybe 75 to 90 your second year, then by your third year you're breaking six figures. Now I quit my full-time job on my the beginning of the third year. Then by the by the fourth year, that's when I did it. That's when I broke six figures for the first time was in my fourth season. So, guys, you know, and, and, and back to the content creation part of it. I mean, just imagine for a moment that I would have been creating content out there when I first started and I did not know what I was doing. Why would I put that stuff on camera like some of that stuff was very embarrassing like I, i'll give you guys a quick example when i first started in my very first couple months i used to drag the machine around with me right because i didn't even know guys back in 2012 there were not videos on youtube like the video that you're watching right now 
So, you know, I was kind of just learning as I go. And then, so, you know, I'm dragging the machine around. I didn't know rigs existed. I didn't know what a hose, that you had professional hose reels and professional rigs. I didn't know any of that. So I'm walking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dragging like the hoses, the water hose and the, the pressure washer with the pressure hose. Of course, back then I was doing pressure washing. I had ladders and I'd go up there and pressure wash a, 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 a like a four foot, four to five foot section, come back down, do, do the lower part, then go back up on a different side on a ladder. I had four or five ladders on one side of the house, like nothing like how we do it today. Imagine me putting that on video because I remember one time, for example, you know, um, I accidentally rubbed up my leg against the machine. Guys, I got this nasty burn in the back of my calf. I had an infection for like a week or two. Now, imagine if I would have had a tripod and a camera catching me on video doing that for you guys. Man, you guys would be like, hey, babe, hey, babe, check this out. Look at this goofy dummy. He says he's going to run a million dollar pressure washing business someday. And he doesn't even know that you're not supposed to touch hot stuff. What a big goofy dummy. Boom, unsubscribe. Of course, that's what's going to happen. Because again, we all want to, we want, like you guys, right? You're watching your favorite YouTuber or content creator because you want to learn. You want to learn what not to do. So you can avoid those things and then, you know, you can run a successful company. So, you know, it makes sense that when you watch these guys, you're going to you're going to see them like I've seen some of these guys have amazing equipment. And but that's not how they started out. I bet they started out like me. I've often have said this. My very first machine I bought on Craigslist for 50 bucks and I used that for a couple of weeks. It broke on me, then I went to uh, Home Depot and I bought, you know, all your Ryobis and your DeWalt's and then I went to, migrated like uh, to Simpson towards the end of my second season. I was using that four gallon a minute Simpson and then the list goes on. The bottom line though, guys, is that you have to temper your expectations. You're not going to make $100,000 your first year in a business. I don't know of anyone who has, okay? Now... You know, you see these content creators and we all talk about how much money you can make. Can you make seven figures, a million dollars? Absolutely. I know, not including myself, I know six, seven guys, at least, that, that uh, have big companies. Multi, multi-million dollar companies. That, as a matter of fact, on one side of me in Fredericksburg, which is about 45 minutes away from Waldorf, Maryland, where I am, you have Red Door. Red Door Pressure Washing, one of the biggest companies in the nation, multi, multi-million dollar guy. And then on the other side of me, Annapolis, about 45 minutes that way towards Baltimore, you have uh, Mid-Atlantic. These are, guys, Mid-Atlantic, they have 29 trucks, 29 rigs. They got 70 people that work for that company. They're making millions of dollars, millions of dollars. So you can, you can make millions of dollars. I know guys that make hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I know guys that, you know, make a couple thousand dollars a month. It all depends on how big you want to get and how much, how much you really go hard at it. But the bottom line is that's not going to happen overnight, guys, for you. Because, again, you go, you, you, you got to do it the right way. And, and the last thing I'm going to say about that is this. Guys, you got to make sure. That, that you do it the right way. And one of the things that I preach a lot on the channel is you acquire your experience first. Then as you progress on that journey, you're also acquiring chemical knowledge. Like a lot of you guys have seen my episode 10, right? Where I have a formula and I teach you the chemicals, the, the main chemicals of the pressure washing business, right? So, you know, as you acquire experience, chemical knowledge, then let your equipment grow with lockstep with that knowledge. And a lot of guys that fail in this business, what they do is they do the opposite of that. They dump all of this money into, into equipment and then they kind of go backwards. As a matter of fact, I wanted to introduce you to, to, this, uh, to this term. It's a new term for the Mr. Bubbles channel. I'm coining the phrase, guys, the Lorenzo method, okay? Lorenzo method. So remember I mentioned there's two people that I wanted to highlight, two guys that failed. So uh, there's a guy in my area. He runs a multi, 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 
million dollar landscaping company. I know him really well. I network with him. Um, you know, let's just say him and I, we, 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 we know each other really well. So anyway, in 2018, it was either 17 or 18, I ran into one of his trucks out in the field. Again, guys, this is a landscaping guy, right? And I seen that he had rigs. I saw on one street, two different rigs washing houses. But these were like, man, some fancy rigs, guys. Like custom stuff, two a gallon a minute machines, really, really expensive rigs. Obviously, Lorenzo didn't build that himself. You could see that he bought it somewhere because even the tanks, the, the big uh, 500 gallon buffer tanks, they had his logos and stuff. And man, it was like, wow, impressive equipment, impressive level of equipment. And so Lorenzo was getting, I did not know because again, we network and I know a lot of people that he knows as well, but in, I never caught wind that Lorenzo was going to get into, into pressure washing. Well, guess what? Fast forward life about two, three months ago, I ran into Lorenzo in a neighborhood where I was there doing estimates, but I just randomly ran into him. So we got to talking. So in the middle of the conversation, I'm like, hey, dude, how's it going with your pressure washing? He's like, man, I got rid of that a long time ago. And here's what happened. He actually had bought three rigs. Guys, he spent over 100K, $100,000 that he spent. In, in, in acquiring these rigs. He also had a, a five-man team that he sent down to Florida somewhere to train for a week, pay their hotels, their food, their accommodation, the whole nine. Imagine how much he invested in this. And then he sends these people out there and Lorenzo told me it took about 18 months and then he called it quits. And the reason why he did it is because his guys were killing everything on site. They were killing the lawn. They were killing the plants. They were damaging people's things. He said that he was having so many headaches from it. So many headaches that finally he just got rid of that completely. He sold the equipment and he was done with it. Because one, I remember he had, the, he said this, uh, this phrase with me, which I liked a lot. He said that he was, he was taking the good money the landscaping money to cover the bad money. So he was making good money to cover the bad money. And, and it was just not smart for him to do that. So he got out of it and now he just does landscaping. So there's a guy that came into this business thinking, oh man, I'm gonna make all of these million, I'm already a millionaire, but I'm gonna make all of these millions of dollars because he knows me and he's like, if that guy did it, I'm going to do it because I'm a lot smarter than that guy, or I'm not sure he thought that, but you, you see what I'm saying. Like he had these expectations, like he was going to have one crew mow the lawn while the other crew, uh, you know, because they were dragging the trailer behind, he was going to have one person washing the house while the other one was mowing the lawn. To me, that doesn't make any sense. And that's not real. That's not real. But hey, that's why we're talking about this because you guys have to set real expectations for yourself. Guys, if Lorenzo, who is a multimillionaire, who has all the resources of like 1% of the nation, of people in the nation have resources like that guy, and that guy could not make it, could not make it in a pressure washing business, right? Now look at us trying to, you know, struggle our way to success here. So make sure that you guys pay attention to this and you lower a little bit because you guys think that you're going to go out there and you're going to make all this money and you invest money in all of this equipment. I would not do that, guys. I say this all the time on the channel. Grow your business before you grow your equipment. You guys, you know, it, you see all these content creators. Yes, we all have amazing rigs. I, I just did a video where we're building a rig. Guys, that rig is going to have a uh, we're finishing it up by this weekend. Um, uh, you guys saw the video where I was doing it with my buddy. But anyway, it's, it has an 8 gallon a minute machine, a 10 gallon a minute machine. It has an AR-45, a 36 inch surface cleaner, a 20 inch surface cleaner, another 8 gallon a minute machine that's on the truck. I mean, guys, like tremendous amount of equipment, but that's not how I started. You guys got that? Like grow yourself, develop your skill sets, and that's what what's going to give you success that is my point so make sure that you guys temper that a little bit go out learn little by little by little because if you try to do too much you're gonna you know you know the bottom line is this that if you uh, try to grow fast you're gonna fall fast you guys got that 
If you try to grow fast, you're gonna fall fast and I don't want that to happen to you guys. Number two, mindset. You know, mindset's one of those words, guys. It's almost like a buzzword where people hear the word mindset and they sort of psychologically check out. So, uh, so here's the deal. What I'm talking about specifically, when I'm talking about mindset, is I'm talking about you guys understanding the growth mindset. Growth mindset. And here's, here's what it is. Most of you guys don't understand or, or, or not realizing. Not, that, 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 uh, that describes it a little bit better, to be honest with you. What it is is this. You want to grow. You want all the reward. But growth only comes from pain. Because, you know, that's how we learn. We're complicated people. We're, all of us are different, but we're very complex. And the way that we learn the best is by suffering. You guys understand that? Because, see, here's the deal, guys. Myself, you, the person I'm talking to right now, all of us on this planet, we're all addicts. We're all addicted. You know what we're addicted to, guys? You know what you're addicted to? You're addicted to positivity. Yes, we all love positive feelings and emotions, right? Like we all want to, you know, embrace things that make us happy and laugh. And we want to run away, run away from things that make us sad or give us anxiety and depression. We don't want those things. We try our hardest to avoid those things. But here's the problem. When you're an entrepreneur, you grow, you learn from pain, and then that growth becomes success you guys understand that like we that's how i did it every per person that i know successful entrepreneur and I, when i say success i mean like like a million bucks plus everyone that i know that's highly successful they all became successful because they they basically suffered a lot and then through that suffering they learn you guys i want you to understand that because just because you go through a bunch of negative situations, it doesn't mean that this business is not for you. You guys should embrace that. I remember, for example, guys, you know, when I first started in this business, you know, I had so many things that happened. I, like, I'll, I'll tell you guys a quick story. So within the first three months of me starting um, um, in this business, I fell off a ladder and I tore my rotator cuff. And, and I was like, wow, man, I can't believe that happened. I spent three days in bed. It was terrible. And even to this day, I still suffer a lot. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't like, um, I don't like uh, ball valves. Some of you guys have asked me about that. I don't like pulling ball valves on my line because I also don't like half-inch lines. I like three-eighths for my pressure line. And it all comes back to my, to my rotator cuff. It's just really hard for me to hold up a lot of weight, even to this day, guys. But you know what? I didn't, it did not stop me. And it was because I understood that I was here to grow and I had to learn from pain in order to grow. Okay. And then I'll give you guys another example. When I finally decided to, to um, you know, do this business full time, man, I remember right in the beginning, I, uh, I quit my job in March. Then around, it was either June or July of that same year, the transmission in my truck went out. And that truck, I had that truck for like eight, nine years. It was a, oh, by the way, because you guys see I have Fords. That was a Dodge Ram 2500 diesel Hemi engine. Oh, man, guys, I love that truck. But anyway, so the transmission on it went bad. And it was like, that was a huge negative at the time. Then guess what? I overcame that. And then like two, maybe three months later after that, bam, the engine went bad. And then from that point on, I had nothing but Fords. But, you know, the point is, guys, Growth comes from pain. As you experience these negative things, it teaches you things. And then you grow. The problem is that a lot of you guys don't understand that this is part of the process. So when you run into negative situations out there, you're like, ah, oh, forget this, man. I, nah, I'm going to quit because, nah, I'm going to go do something else because this is, this is too much. But this is how the universe tests you to see if you're going to become one of the creme de la creme de la creme guys or not. And you only grow and you become successful because of those situations you're going to go through. You guys got that? Like, I'll give you an example. You know, um, it was in my, it was either my third or fourth year because I didn't start doing roof washing like until right around the end of my third season. So anyway, 
I remember, guys, my very first big roof wash. It was a roof and house wash. And it wasn't my first roof washing job, but you know, it was right around like maybe, I didn't, I don't think it was, uh, I had more than five at that point. But anyway, here's my point. Uh, it was a, it was a $1,699 job, $1,700 house wash and roof wash. And guys, I was so happy, man. I was like, wow, I just made what I used to make in a whole week. I made in a few hours. I was so happy. Then like three days later, I get a text, right? And the text was just said, WTF, question mark, question mark, question mark. And then it was followed by dozens of pictures. Oh, wow, guys, I killed this guy's lawn. Wow. I mean, <laughs> wow, guys. Like, I, man, I did not leave one blade of grass alive, guys. You know, I didn't know anything about reclamation bags. I didn't know anything about home protection, plant protection. I was just learning how to soft wash, and I killed, I killed the entire lawn, guys. I killed the entire lawn. But because I understood that in order for me to grow, I had to go through things like that, it wasn't a big deal to me. I fixed that. I returned the guy his money. So that was a $1,700 loss. Then I had to fix the problem. That cost me, at that time, it was like eight, dollars to fix. And I fixed it. But that was a $2,500 loss on my part. But guess what? That's how I started to research how to do roofs properly. How to put a system in place so that doesn't happen again. That's why now we have reclamation bags and why we wash a roof a certain type of way and why we water plants. Anyway, that's for another video. But the point is, guys, you learn from those experiences. So don't let those things trip you up because that's all part of the, the, the success story. Failing, you cannot have success without failure. They are, they are interlocked, interchangeable, because that is how you succeed, by failing a lot. You fall down, you get up, you keep going, you learn from your experiences, and you become stronger and better, and, you, and, and, and that's, uh, and that's uh, how you succeed, okay? Number three on my list, guys. It kind of goes hand in hand with the second one, but, you know, this is, um, this is something that is, man, it trips a lot of people up, and it's this. Why your why is simply not big enough. And that's just the bottom line. Like, why are you in this business is what I'm trying to ask you. Like, you guys have to have a reason that is like, man, it's like a, the size of a mountain. I'll give you an example. You know, um, when, I, when I wrote down my goals when I first started Mr. Bubbles, I had only three. I don't had only three. This was 12 years ago. I had three goals. My number one goal is I wanted to retire at 50. My number two goal is I wanted to run or have the number one company in Southern Maryland. That's where I am. And the, the, the last one is I wanted to become financially free. That was it. And guess what? 12 years later, I haven't reached any of those goals. Any of them. Guys, I'm still working on all three. You guys got that? Like my why, the reason, my goal for doing this business I mean, it was like, it was like Mount Everest size. And some of you guys are like, oh, you know, I got a credit card debt that I want to pay off. Oh, okay. I mean, you're going to go out there and you're going to experience some negativity and you're going to be like, ah, this is not worth the hassle because your why is simply not big enough. Like you guys remember that saying, um, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. It, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you got to be ferocious. You got to get out there and be hungry, hungry to succeed, hungry to, you know, uh, to get out of your situation. And you will, you will succeed. But man, your why better be massive. It, may, it better be really, 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 really big. Because, you know, um, you know we were talking about this and, and when we were talking about growth mindset, guys, there are so many things so many things that are going to happen to you. I liken this business to this. This is going to make a lot of sense to you guys. So there's two versions of yourself. Think of yourself, okay? You have the version that you are and the version that you want to be, all right? So think of the person that you want to be right now. Okay, so you, got, you guys got that locked into your mind? Okay, imagine the car that you're going to have, the house that you're going to have, the relationships that you're going to have, the places you're going to be able to travel, the, the freedom that you're going to be providing for yourself 
and for the people around you. What an amazing life that is, right? Okay, so now, how do we go from where you are right now to this person that you visualize yourself becoming? Okay, here's the deal. Between that person and the person you are and the person you want to become is a field, a landmine field, full of landmines, guys. There's a thousand landmines. And I am where I am because I've already, I've already walked this road and I've already eliminated all the landmines out of my way. You guys got that? And you guys are here and you're like, oh, I mean, I got to walk through all these landmines. And yes, you got to suffer all of these things and then you grow. And the more landmines that you get out of a way, the more success you're going to have. Like, for example, when I when I killed that guy's grass, that was a landmine that 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 blew off. Uh, that blew off my big toe right there, guys. That blew off my big toe. And then yeah, something else happened and boom, that was a pinky toe. And then all of a sudden, boom, I done lost the foot. And then bam, there goes my kneecap. But then I got back up and I kept going, got back up because again, my goal was not to make some money to pay off a bill or my goal was not to buy a new car or my goal was not to, you know, have, um, you know, some, some, um, you know, spend spending money or whatever. My goal was like so far ahead that the, that the, the negative was small in comparison to my goal. And that is the point that I'm trying to stress to you guys. Like, I'm not 50 yet. I'm going to be 50 in three years. And that's still my goal to retire at 50. And by the way, what I'm doing right now is what I'm going to be doing from 50 all the way to, you know, the end. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be creating content and coaching people. Right. So and then the other thing is this, guys, you got to understand that falling down is just part of the process. I, I promise you guys. It, everyone goes through this and yet you know what let's do this too on the in the comment section you know tell us your story tell us the things you've been through like let's start sharing and by the way guys i love this topic so much i'm going to do a separate video at some point here where i'm probably going to spend like 45 minutes just just detailing for you guys like all of the crazy things that have happened to me in this business like there's been some things where I'm just like, wow, dude, I'm like the, I'm like Neo in the Matrix. I'm like, oh my God, there goes a bullet. Oh, I just dodged another bullet. I swear to God, like this business will challenge the living heck out of you. But it's a process of elimination. It's trying to eliminate the weak so the strong survive. And I want you guys to be one of the companies that survive. But remember, temper your expectations have a growth mindset and for that you have to understand that pain is part of that growth you cannot have the reward without the sacrifice and then finally guys have a real solid reason for why you are in this business are you trying to put your kid through college that's a real good reason are you trying to you know uh, retire early that's a real good reason or maybe already retired and you're just trying to stay busy and, and, and keep yourself active and challenged. That's a real good reason. Make sure that your why is big enough because if not, you're gonna have that, uh, you guys remember the Karate Kid movie? I, I know you, some of you guys are probably watching that on Netflix now. I'm talking about the original one, guys. The one with Mr. Miyagi. You remember that moment, that uh, sweep the leg Johnny moment? You guys remember that? If not, we're all going to have this moment. All of us. We all have a sweep the leg Johnny moment. And if you're not paying attention and if your why is not big enough, the universe is going to come in and chop you down at your knees and you're going to be like, oh man, I can't believe I made it. So I told you about Lorenzo and I'm going to leave it with this second story. So about five, maybe six years ago, a buddy of mine, came to me and said, hey, my uncle wants to open a pressure washing business. And I was wondering if you could sit down and talk to him about growing his business and, you know, giving him advice. And I did. And he started a business and I tried to give him advice, but he didn't listen. He wanted to do pressure washing. This is actually what he told me. He said that um, he was like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do, you know, chemicals because 
people don't like it when you spray chemicals in your house i'm going to be the pressure washing guy and so he was telling me about this telescoping wand because i told him it's dangerous to get on ladders and he was like oh i'm not going to be getting on ladders because i got this telescoping wand and i was literally guys i was like oh my god this guy and then i just you know what i let him do his thing and then uh, it was not even like eight months later he got out of it i heard it through uh, my friend bought all his equipment out and, and and if you look at that situation right you want to talk about unreal expectations the growth mindset like nothing was there and 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 the reason why he was doing it i mean some goofy reason guys you got to make sure that you're in this business for the right reason and you will go very 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 far there's a lot of money to be made out there but i always say this the money is at the very top and the top guys are making a lot of money because they're skilled at what they do that's all i got for you guys today i really really appreciate you guys coming to my channel and watching this pressure washing business advice video guys i highly recommend uh the next video you guys uh, i don't think some of you guys have met joe i've interviewed him before and he's been on the channel before he's one of my coaching clients you're going to get to see him use that rig and we did we did a lot of great content with that so make sure you tune into that episode also make sure you email me i got some great resources for you guys man at least like a dozen of you guys every day have been emailing me and asking for that uh the pricing blueprint do not goof up on that part make sure that your your pricing is right because that has to be the the foundation of your financial foundation of your business okay so make sure you email me you can find my email in the description of every video guys every video just go in there email me and i will send you pricing blueprint for 2024 and i absolutely love it when you guys email me because man that is like the best part of my day interacting with you guys and whatnot but uh but yeah thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys on the next one bubbles out